In today's Clash of Clans video, we're going to be taking a look at the CWL Elite 15 War Badgers Bootcamp versus China XDM. Let's get straight into it. How's everyone going and welcome back to another Clash of Clans War Recap. Today we're looking at the Badgers Bootcamp versus China XDM Week 2 War CWL Elite 15. Now this war was really, really close. Close both clans coming in with some uh, some high numbers on the three stars. Badgers Bootcamp with the eleven triples and China XDM with the nine triples. So uh, definitely a solid war from both teams here. But let's go ahead and jump over to uh, to a few replays here to just kind of show off a few of the a uh, few of the triples that uh, Badgers Bootcamp had here. We're going to start ourselves with a Queen Charge Hog Rider raid from uh, Hazakura here. So, uh, let's see. We're going to start with this uh, queen over down by this uh, about 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock side. Going to try and uh, queen walk into the enemy queen here. We're going to have that blimp come in over this uh, single target Inferno Tower. That's going to get that down. Absolutely no issues there. Now, queen will have to burn a rage early here because of the warden pad. But after she deals with that warden pad, she's going to go straight in there for that eagle artillery. Now, eagles really are a big problem when going into raids, especially with the mass hogs. Miners usually can tank that eagle shell a little bit more than the hogs can as they're a little bit more squishy here, but gets the wall break on the inside layer there, which opens the queen up to the eagle and those two expos there. We still have both the scatter shots, but the clan castle is going to go down. We're going to see that lava hound get absolutely annihilated there. And uh, those pups going to be dealt with by the poison spell there. So pretty nice work with this queen charge. Now we are already down to about a minute and 45 seconds. And typically you don't want to wait too long with the hog riders. You want to get them in at the minimum of about one minute and 30 seconds here. But you'll see that hogs actually go in a little bit later than that. But it still works out for them here. So I'm going to drop that Coca Luna to make sure that that, queen, uh, that queen's healers stay alive there. It is going to pull two red mines. But no seeking air mines get pulled there. Now look at this queen. She can actually grab both scatter shots from where she's sitting at the moment which is pretty clutch now this queen is going to go left here and she does end up peeling outside oh no she doesn't never mind the hog riders go in and they take down that expo for her and here comes the world champion with all the hogs and the warden straight in to support this queen now he's hoping to get his queen to go left here to deal with that back end scatter shot that's why he's kind of forced the hogs at the top side and sure enough that's exactly where she goes now hogs are taking a ton of damage because of that scatter shot but thankfully he does have that free spell going to drop the freeze over the scatter shot keeping those hog riders alive now he's lost a lot of them already at this point. He actually is going to rage only about two of them in the core of the base there. There is the earthquake for the town hall. We're going to see that uh, warden ability get popped a little bit late as well. And uh, notice something here. Pretty much all of the hog riders have died out. But because of the queen charge stepping up here and getting a ton done alongside the royal champion stepping up and getting the defenses down, this one is going to be a three star. So all of the hog riders dying off early here before the raid was actually over. Uh, which typically when that happens, you know, the raids, you're, you're not going to triple. There's no way. But Hazakura is going to swag the queen ability here. Didn't even need it. A uh, very, very strong double layered wall break uh, for the queen charge there. And that's going to get him through the base. Absolutely no problems here. Very, very nicely done. And uh, again, I want to give a huge shout out to everyone participating in this war. I know we have 11 triples to choose from. I was only able to choose five of them. I tried to uh, do some, add some variety to the uh, to the hits that we're seeing uh, with these videos. I plan on posting recaps for each of our wars um, throughout this season. And I want to try and make sure that uh, each video has a lot of variety in attacks. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump over to a, uh, a second raid here. Uh, is this the raid? No, that's, that's not the one. Hold on one second. I believe, where was it? Where is it at? There it is. All right, there we go. Here's a bit of a queen charge hybrid from Zoro. Zoro's been getting it done. His hit rate has been skyrocketing. He's uh, He's been doing some really nice stuff for the clan. Uh, one of the honorary members of King Jeffrey, or the uh, elders of King Jeffrey, rather. But uh, Zoro's going to come in here with a bit of a queen charge by this 10 o'clock side here. Going to start the queen, throwing in those coca loons in front of her just to make sure that there's no seeking air mines straight out the gates that will take down these healers. Going to drop that queen in. She's going to move forward for the uh, archer tower there. And he is going to get the wall break in on that inside layered wall. Oh, no, he doesn't. Never mind. He doesn't get the wall break. I, uh, I'm completely mistaken. So even... With the wall break not going his way, he's still going to be able to triple here. And uh, he's going to use that second super wall breaker to kind of step up here and clear that wall out of the way. That one was uh, meant for the inside of the base to try and make sure that he could go through and uh, and clear the core. 
And uh, he's going to go ahead and freeze the Town Hall and the Expo here. That's a good play that's going to allow him to save that Queen ability for a little bit later in the raid here. Now, Queen's taking a ton of damage at the moment, but notice she's staying in that Rage spell, and she's starting to take down defenses, which means that the more defenses she takes down, the less damage that's gonna, uh, the less damage is going to be on her. We've got three Headhunters and a Witch, a bunch of Archers coming out of that Clan Castle there. The Headhunters will slow the Queen down, but because of that Poison spell, they will go down fairly quickly. And now we have the Hybrid coming in from this 11 o'clock side. And notice the setup Zoro has here at the moment for this Queen Charge Hybrid. The Queen is meant to kind of push forward and stay on the left side of the base, while the Hybrid is meant to dive through and deal with the right side. Now, because the Hybrid has been sent in at the time that it was, this Queen is going to eventually dial back around to the other side of the base rather than beating through walls once these defenses go down. We're going to use that Rage spell over on the right side for the Hybrid because realistically this Queen can get through these defenses on her own. She's not going to need any more Rage spells. If anything, you can just use the ability as well. But now the hybrid is pretty much diving through here. We have the Siege Barracks, Hog Riders moving through here, helping out the main hybrid. And again, with that queen ability still in hand, this queen's going to be able to take down that entire left side of the base up until that single target Inferno there. And uh, because those healers are really keeping her alive, Royal Champion steps up, takes down the scatter shot. Only real thing that's a bit of an issue here is going to be that single target Inferno. But the queen's beating a wall, and albeit it's not the greatest wall, but it is still a pretty solid wall in general. We're going to see that Royal Champion go down to the single target Inferno there, which is a bit unfortunate. And notice it got a little close here near the end, but because of that Warden, I believe, who's going to step up and snipe the uh, Inferno. Does the Warden snipe the Inferno? No, I guess he doesn't. Well, I'm, I'm confused as to what, take down, what takes down the Inferno. It might, it might even just be the king diving through here that queen is going to stay alive the entire raid and eventually the king is going to step up uh, with the help from those few wizards and the queen here to take down this inferno and uh, secure the three star for zora here fantastic raid getting it done um and let's go ahead and jump over to our third replay of this war we're going to be showing off a uh, Z uh yeti bat no not a yeti bat a uh, a zap yeti attack strategy here this is uh this is from Raj. I believe Raj no, was it was did Raj six pack? Let me let me just confirm that. We had one six pack this war. Who was it? Was it Raj? It was Raj. Raj coming in with the six pack for this war. Congrats to him. Let's go ahead and jump over to his uh to his hit here. Bit of a zap yeti strat. We don't normally see this one. It is a little bit off meta. But let's see what he's trying to aim for here. Gonna drop that warden in by this 130 side, dropping those healers to keep him alive through that archer tower there. We're gonna see these zaps go down on the inferno at the top side there as well as the few defenses and then eventually take that down and completely gut that uh, side of the base there setting a very nice funnel for the yetis to eventually dive in straight down the middle i would guess he doesn't have any super wall breakers but we do have a uh, jump spell so might even drop this jump over by uh this scattershot and expo here that one loon at the top side doing pretty well he swagged the warden ability on this hit that's a that's another thing i forgot to mention there doesn't have a warden anymore he's popped that warden early was a complete mistake somehow comes in and still triples the base i don't know how he did it no one knows how he did it but he did it and we're going to stick with it so here come all the yetis and the bowlers from this top side here to support that warden there warden taking a bit of damage from that expo but it's not the end of the world we do have the ice golem stepping up to freeze those defenses keep that warden alive and there's the rage spell to keep everything moving now that siege barracks is doing some really nice funneling work here for his main army and he's going to take a bunch of damage and lose all of his bowlers before they get to the core however he still has every single one of his yetis alive and those healers are doing some really nice work keeping them healthy so so all the Yeti Mites and the Yetis moving through the base here. We did we did have the Hog Riders from the Siege Barracks come out there and they're supporting the Yetis as they move through. Royal Champion is also supporting from the right side. The King has somehow managed to stay on the outside here and look at that Queen. She's going to dive straight in towards the core of this base where she can reach a bunch of high value buildings. That Expo, Bomb Tower, Eagle Artillery and eventually beat through a wall and grab that other scatter shot there. Now Royal Champion ability is still in hand. We're going to have to burn that Queen ability because of the single target Inferno. But at the same time, look at how much base is left. And look at the troops he's got left on the board. That queen is going to be able to step up and take down that multi that single target Inferno eventually, I believe so. Royal Champion does almost go down here, but is able to save her ability for the Tesla farm at the back end. And uh, this queen will go down to the single target Inferno, and it gets really close here. Not going to lie, got a couple of wizards on the cleanup for this raid here, and that uh, Royal Champion is going to actually get tanked by those healers there. The Inferno not going to target the RC, and the healers are actually going to heal her back up to full health, and she'll deal with the rest of the buildings there and take down the base for the three-star for Raj here. Very, very fantastic hit by him. Uh, one of our uh, one of our six-packers for this week. I believe he was the only six-packer, actually, to, uh, to be honest. But uh, yeah. Solid stuff by Raj here. 
And uh, again, I just want to give a shout out to everyone who was involved with the planning and the, uh, the lineup setup when it comes to arranging the wars, people participating in the wars, those on voice planning, those on the plan channels. We had a bunch of collaboration this war and we had a couple of last minute triples I believe that came through and, uh, and got us the win here. Yeah, we had Dr. PhD coming through with the triple as well as Hazakura. And um, it's Seepin. That's his name. Seepin here with the uh, with the clutch triple near the end as well. But let's go ahead and take a look at Doom here with the Queen Charge Lalo. Again, we're trying to we're trying to trying to throw in some variety for these uh, for these recaps here, just to kind of show. Look, guys, we're not just a solid Queen Charge hybrid clan. We're not a solid Queen Charge Lalo clan. We are pretty much everything under the sun here. But we're going to see Doom coming in with a Queen Charge. Lalo going to start that Queen by this 3 o'clock side, just about. And he's uh, he's planning on kind of pushing her in towards this Inferno Tower. They're going to break the wall open because there was no gap in that wall. Had there have been no gap in that wall, there could have been a completely different story uh, with this plan here. But the Queen's going to easily get in straight towards that single target Inferno. As well as we have two more Super Wall Breakers. We got three Super Wall Breakers for this raid. So... You could already tell going into this one, this is going to be a uh, pretty OP Queen Charge going into it. We are going to have to burn that uh, Raid Spell a little bit earlier than anticipated there because of the damage from the World Champion. But it's not the end of the world. We're just barely hanging on with this Queen ability. And thankfully, we don't burn it here because the damage starts going down. Now we have the Royal Champion coming in from this left side here to deal with that scatter shot and Air Defense there. And now eventually, after these buildings go down, waiting very patiently, he is going to drop that third Super Wall Breaker to get the third layer wall break in over by the Inferno Tower. What an OP Queen Charge. Going to have to burn this Queen ability here because of the enemy Queen. But notice where the Queen's going to go after taking down the enemy Queen. She's going to step up here, and she's actually going to take down that Inferno Tower. We've still got a free spell left alive. She's going to actually stay out of range of that Inferno Tower until she deals with the CC. We're going to use the Final Rage on the Queen here because we know, look, we can push her through, and she can get even more damage than anticipated here. So the, the Slammer's going to come in from the right side here, deal with that Scatter Shot, and take it down. Absolutely no worries there. It'll go down in one hit because of the Royal Champion. And now we've got the Lalo coming in from the 8 o'clock side here. Everything's going to dive straight in for this Town Hall, and the Town Hall will activate because of the buildings that have gone down already. Town Hall activates at 50%, which means that those loons will then target it. He misses the Warden ability just ever so slightly there, but trying to make sure that he can Warden ability at least a few of those loons there. And look at that Scatter Shot, or look at that um, Slammer up at the top side there. It is still alive, and it's finally going to pop here as he gets into the back end of this base here. But that Queen Charge getting quite a lot done here for uh, for Doom's Raid, and that one is going to be a uh, three-star. Plenty of loons left. There's no splash damage. When you've got this many loons left alive in a raid and you have no splash damage, you know it's going to be a triple if time permits it here. A lot of the minions and pups stop, stuck on that king over there, but they'll, uh, they'll eventually take him down and uh, secure the triple. Very, very nicely done here by Doom with the Queen Charge Lalo. I've been using a lot of Queen Charge Lalo in Legends, and uh, honestly, I would have to say it's probably my favorite strategy right now to use um, over Queen Charge Hybrid and over the uh, Dragons. But uh, yeah, very, very nice triple, and we are going to jump into the final three-star of today's recap. And guys, I did it. I tripled in a League War. First time ever, never happened before. I'm just kidding. I've tripled before, but I was able to secure a triple with the dragons. Thought I would throw this one in. It's a bit of an interesting strat, a zap drag uh, attack on this base. Now, it isn't my plan. I was able to uh, copy this plan from a, uh, another member here, but thankfully, this is the this was the go-to plan for this base, and it absolutely crushed it with uh, with a bit of swag, and you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through. But starting with these zap spells, taking down that entire 6 o'clock compartment here, dropping in those loons to help step forward and take down those uh, those few defenses there. And that baby dragon is also going to do some really nice work in funneling for the dragons here. Now we're going to see the king coming at this top side here by the army camp. Going to take it down, going to clear through it just fine. And we're going to see all the dragons pour in straight over the dark spell factory and that lab. A couple of cocoa loons in to make sure there are no black mines. There's the dragons, and here comes the warden to follow suit. Now... We do have the queen at the top side as well to kind of move forward with the king and force those dragons into the core of the base where the town hall is. Now, a couple of headhunters will come out of the defending clan castle there, but they're going to actually go for the king rather than the warden, which is huge for, uh, for my play later on because that warden will stay alive. We're going to freeze that first single target inferno there. We're going to actually drop a poison over the queen because the clan castle uh, died out and I actually missed the poison, uh, funnily enough here. And uh, now you can see there's not a ton of uh, there's not a ton of defenses that can take down these dragons. Granted, you've got a Tesla farm there, but we're going to actually use the blimp for this right side Inferno Tower. We're going to pop that blimp over that, and those two dragons will join the uh, main force there. 14 dragons on this base at the moment. 
and uh, they're going to absolutely wreck this one here. We had all ground expos as well, or no, no, I'm sorry, not all ground expos, but we had most of the expos on ground, and uh, I, I might have missed the uh, the swag freeze, but we had a swag freeze over here. If you saw it, you saw it. You know, we're we'll just we're not going to worry about it. But uh, yeah, that was a the, funny enough. This was actually the first attack of the war and the first triple of the war as well. I try and attack fresh every single time. I'm not really a uh, cleanup type hitter. I prefer to hit fresh. And uh, funny enough, first attack of the war comes through with a uh, triple. So very, very uh, nice war for me. But yeah, that's going to do it for this recap. Again, huge shout out to everyone that tripled. I just want to take a look and uh, show we had Doom with that Queen Charge Lalo. We had Azakura with the six pack. Let's see. We had me with the triple. We had Sakura coming in with the triple. We had uh, Unicorn coming in with the triple as well. We had Seepin with one of his triples uh, alongside that. We had Raj with the six pack. We had Zoro with the triple. And we had Dr. PhD with that clutch triple near the end of the war. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you do enjoy this content, please feel free to drop a like on the video. And don't forget to subscribe for uh, more of these recaps. I'm going to try and do these for each and every week for CWL Elite 15. Uh, I believe season nine. It's uh, very, very interesting stuff and super fun. Huge shout out to the KJ guys. We did an awesome job this week and uh, hoping to do an even more awesome job in week three. That is going to do it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. See ya.